Oh, we're live? This is live? All right, what's All up, right. everybody? We are here. This is Just For My People. I'm your host, Chris Carr. We got a special guest today. Introduce yourself, my friend. Hello, my name is Angel, professionally known as Homeboy Sandman. What up, Chris? Yo, what's up? Now, y'all are in for a treat. This is a person that we brought into the studio back when we first started Brooklyn Wildlife. May yes. have been one of the first three people we interviewed. Yeah, it worked. Yeah. I'm a pioneer. Yeah. And, and it was like, uh, for me as a fan of hip hop, it's so awesome to constantly run into folks and to see that they constantly are putting out dope material. Mm -hmm. And so we're here to celebrate. You just dropped a new album. Yes. What's the name of the project? Uh, the record is called Don't Feed the Monsters, the new record. All right, yeah, so before yeah, we get into that, though, just as humans, how are you doing, man? You feeling all right? I'm doing well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing good. You know, glory be to God. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I feel I feel well. You know what I mean? I feel, you know, my body feels good. My people's doing good. Who could ask for anything more? Good, good. Mm -hmm. And so with, with this new project, Don't Feed the Monsters, where'd the name come from in the first place? Um, It come from, you know, uh, 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 you know, the... the Inside my head, you know, there be things running around on a day to day basis, you know, from fear to jealousy to anxiety to doubt to, you know, to, to anger to, to, you know, all these different things, you know what I'm saying? Um, to lust to, to, to a bunch of stuff that, that I've been taught was cool since I was a kid that I'm now realizing isn't wasn't really that cool, you know what I mean? Like different bravado or egotistical stuff or misogynistic stuff, just all these different things. But they're still in there because they was pushed in there so 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 much, you know what I'm saying? And um, you know, all these all these different forces come together to kind of formulate this creature mon you know, this monster, you know? That if I feed it really becomes powerful and is capable of all types of takeovers and mayhem, you know? But, um, and that's what this record is really a lot about, you know, not feeding that monster and, um, you know, starving it, you know, doing, doing whatever it takes to starve it, you know, self-doubt, self-hate, uh, you know, just, you know, the non-good looks, all the non-good looks. Yeah, now, some people, including myself, Maybe kind of shocked because you've always been a pretty introspective artist in presentation, and and so before we get into the specific for this album, what was your first project? Uh, well, my first project was uh, Nourishment, 2007, way way back in the day. Um, that was my first record, 2007, March March 30th or 31st, 2007. My first record came out called Nourishment. It was an EP with nine tracks. Later on that year. Nourishment Second Helpings, the, the LP came out. But this is when we was just doing the Slim Disc CDs and I was still selling them on my book bag, going to every open mic, going to, that's when I met Conscious, when I met TK, Tasty Keish, and Ty, and everybody that was out at the time at all the open mics at the Bowery and at the New York and every place everybody used to be at, yo, Dub. Um, yeah, so that was a while ago. But you know, you like, I do feel I do feel um that I have always been introspective to a degree, but I'm only able to be introspective enough as I'm being honest with myself. You know what I mean? Right. So I can hit a wall and I feel, you know, like the record before this record, you know, I come up against this wall and couldn't get over it. So I thought I was being introspective, but I wasn't. Because I wasn't I wasn't facing things and I was dealing with delusion and denial, you know what I mean? So I kind of feel like that's why in this record, getting over that hump, which is, that was a wall that I never hit in my life. You know what I'm saying? Like I hit different walls at different times, but some of these particular walls I hadn't come to. So being over the, you know, or working to get over them, kind of, I guess, brought me to a new level of what's going on inside me, you know what I'm saying? Well, instead of starting with the beginning, why don't we run backwards? It was this album, and then what did you put out before? So Before that, I put out a record called Dusty. Um, last year and then um, you know when I when I finished the record I loved it so much I was like this is heat you know pure pure heat you know and, um, and it was so bugged out because uh, you know I mean it's part of my journey you know what I'm saying I'm not hitting up the label asking them to take it down or anything you know and, and but 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 I do definitely 
you know, it stings. Not, not that it stings me. It's all perfect and it's all good, but I don't at all mind when that's not the first project of mine people hear. You know what I mean? Because just my mind state was in a specific place that it isn't right now, and I don't want to go back there. You know what I'm saying? So I, I feel, you know, all the glory be to God for... for I don't feel like anybody's going to hear that. Yeah, I just, that. You know, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. You know what I'm saying? So Dusty... Listen to Dusty after something else, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's super interesting, bro. I saw you perform at um, Rose Gold, and you were about to do a song, and then you were like, you know what? I'm not going to do that song. When I recorded that, I felt a certain way. I don't really feel that way yeah, right that's, that was Yeah, that was a Dusty jam. That's what I'm saying. Because by the time we started touring, me and Quelle was doing that tour, yeah. and Quelle did the whole new record on production, and Ron's on it a little, and does a lot of bunch of background vocals. He's fantastic. He really is great. But um, And he was on Dusty 2 on one jam, um, but I was already starting to feel because the record came out, I guess, like October of last year. That Rose Gold show probably was November. It's like the next month. I, I think that was even later. I think it was February. Yeah, or, okay, or, okay. So maybe it was. Oh, was it earlier this year? Yeah, yeah. Okay, true that. True I think y'all were about to start touring uh, over to Europe afterwards. Okay. I think it was it was either the beginning or end of your U.S. tour. Okay, okay. So I might get the time mixed up, but but yeah. Things like that was happening on stage. Like, you know, I, I used to like this song. I don't like it no more. You know what I mean? And that you about to. I started doing other songs, like a couple of shows, and then I had conversations with you know fans at the merch table after the thing. And some of them were long, you know, and some of them were even on going over email just discussing because a lot of people were like, hey, you know, and you know, I can't even remember. The, it was probably the. The P-U-S-S-Y jam that I stopped doing. But even though there was a lot of other jams that I stopped doing, I really kind of feel like I only do four jams off that record moving forward. Um, just because of the verbiage and the energy. I don't want to, you know, when I get up on stage and I do a record, even if that's not where I am no more. Because I don't know if I, you know, I'm not at Don't Feed the Monster anymore. So when I get up on stage, I haven't yet because of the what have you. But when I get up on stage and do Don't Feed the Monster... I'm going to be going back, you know, it's kind of like a channel, you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to be stepping into that skin, you know what I'm saying? But that's my skin, but it'll be an older skin, you know what I mean? But but a lot of those dusty skins, I don't even want to step into no more. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. Like, a uh, uh, long, long time ago, like, when I first moved to New York, I moved for a relationship, and it fell apart a year after I moved here. Mm -hmm. And I wrote a song that was, for me, it was really important to getting over it. And when I perform it, I'd almost cry. And people were like, that's our favorite song from you. And after a month or two, I started getting over the relationship. And they're like, you going to do the thing? And I'm like, I don't want to feel like that anymore. Word that's up. not where I'm at. And, and it's, I'm not really a one trick, one trick pony like that. Word up. Yeah. Um, so Definitely. it's interesting to, to see yourself grow through your music. Word up. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I feel you so much on that, on that, you know, not wanting to do that. And I feel you so much on that. I mean, I feel like as artists, you know what I mean? It's a real blessing because, I mean, some people journal and some people, but, you know, I started writing rhymes, you know, in a in a in a in a headspace, you know, that I I started writing rhymes on a regular basis, like daily. I mean, like 13 years ago, and that's third. That's 90 percent of the days in the last 13 years. I've been trying to write a rhyme, trying to see where I'm at that day and what I'm thinking. You know what I mean? And that's such a good. It's just such a good gauge for, you know, I could go listen to old records, but I guess it's just like journaling because I could listen to old records just like people will go look in an old, you know, journal, you know what I mean? And that story that you tell about not wanting to feel, sometimes it's ex that I, I relate to that a lot because sometimes a song is so important and even critical, integral to the self-therapy, you know what I mean? Um, um, but then once it's out, you know, we'll set it aside, you know? Yeah, and so before Dusty, what was the record before that? Before that, the joint before Dusty, I believe, was Humble Pie, which was an EP that had a uh, production by Edon in its entirety, and he rhymed on it a bit as well. And, uh, you know, he's another, uh, 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 you know, remarkably talented individual. Um, we did that joint, was an EP. And that joint, you know, um, yeah, that was, that was, you know, that was a, I was in a unique spot. At that time, I guess that was kind of, you know, I, I, I drop pretty much every year, you know, because right. I'm always right. So I drop pretty much every year and I could really drop with every single year. 
there's more stuff that I didn't drop. Like the way things are set up with the tour cycle and you know, just the promo cycle. Like it seems like dropping every year has kind of become the, the, the groove that I fell into, you know, that it's sustainable, just the way it works out or whatever. But shoot, I got to figure out a way to drop, you know, every four or five months, you know what I'm saying? Because right. then I could keep up with myself a little bit, you know what I mean? But um, work. And uh, someone asked, actually, I posted on Facebook that I would be interviewing you, and I had some people send me some questions. And one uh, person was asking, like, how would that project with Idan different than some of your other solo work or some mm -hmm. of your other collaborative work? Right. Well, um, you know, just the the last three records have been collaborative in the sense that they were all one producer. You know what I'm saying? Quelle doing the most recent Mono and Stereo, who I've been working with. Mono and Stereo, you know, to a lot of when you heard a LRTNC, that's Mono and Stereo. When you heard a RTNC, when you heard a Authentic, when you heard a Richie Moore, when you heard a L this dude changed his name so many times, he don't want people to know who he is. You know what I'm saying? But I've been rocking with him throughout all these different names. So now he's Mono and Stereo. But you know, when I when I did Dusty with him, some people didn't recognize it. That's the same dude that did Cool Heart Photo Crescent in its entirety. You know what I mean? Which was a record that came out before, but and did the Miracle for me was you know like. But did a bunch of songs for me, but collaborate the 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 Edon, the difference, really it you know, collaboration for me oftentimes, not always, because I definitely still put out records that, that are produced by people I've never met, that we've gone back and forth. I mean never met and wrote, you know, and we go back and forth with the production and that because you know the way the internet is now. I could record and that could be post-production done and sent back and okayed and whatever. Yep. But um, but as of late, you know, like me and Quelle being in studio together, being on the road together, like he got a certain energy that I love and admire, and his produce got a certain magic in it as well. And 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 it's something I want to tap into. I can't get there on my own. Same with Edan. I can't get there on my own. You know what I mean? I can't. I can't. So, so your question being about humble pie, like, you know, words like psychedelic are thrown around with Edan, or you know, he uses a lot of filters. It's a unique sound, you know what I mean? And and even, you know, there's vocal filters. This stuff, I, it, it, it differs. I mean, this, if you listen, to, if you listen to humble pie, it don't sound nothing like, it don't sound nothing at all like don't feed the monster. You know what I mean? Not even a little bit. But Don't Feed the Monster don't sound anything at all like Dusty. They all don't sound like each other. And none of them don't sound like the good son when we was, you know, or hanging out or actual factual pterodactyl. You know what I mean? Yep. Because for me, collaboration, the people I wind up collaborating with, I think I regard as individuals that have a magic. You know, I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for, 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 for the creative creativity that, that, that God blesses me with. But I see all the time these people that have these energies that I admire and I'm like yo I wish I could do that I can't do that you know what I'm saying like that's fly you know how can I get involved with that and I get to I get to we get to we get to form on a you know on a Voltron like scale um and that's you know that's 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 really what I think of when I think about Humble Pie you know um and when I when I think about my collaborative records I think you know because I don't know, you know, I got a bunch of stuff that isn't really collaborative in the sense of whole project that's not out yet. Like right. some stuff, I'll, I'm gonna keep collaborating, but you know, I look at records that are collaborations as different from records that are not entirely a collaboration and, um, or albums, you know, I look at them differently, but, but the ones that are entire collaborations are, are oftentimes a, 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 a result of me just kind of being mesmerized by something and, and wanting to tap into it and being lucky enough to be able to build with that artist, you know? I mean, that's dope. I, I saw also y'all did some pretty cool videos to that Humble Pie joint. Uh, what was the project prior to that? Um, shoot, what was out before Humble Pie? Dag, was it was it Veins or was it, did Veins come out before Kindness for Weakness or after? Shoot, but they see, I, I gotta be honest with you. This is what I'm asking, because I'm, 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 I purposely want to have you go through the halls of like, you release a lot of music. Yeah, yeah, I drop every year, so I, I'm not sure, I'm not sure how much further we could go without me starting to get confused, you know what I'm saying? Now, what about uh, the Project Lice? 
Likes, oh and, yeah, and, yeah, and definitely. There are two parts of that, right? There's three actually. Three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. ASAP, Big Shout, ASAP Rock. Um, we uh, yeah, we toured. I started through touring also. You know, um, uh, we toured, and I'll tell you honestly, like as a writer, um, you know, I always I remember when I was in in the Virgin. I think the first time I heard Ace, I remember the first time I heard Ace. Cause I was in a Virgin mega store in the basement. They had the hip hop joints, and I think that um, what's the name of that label they was down with? Either Def Jokes. Def or... Jokes. They had a little sampler, and and I was listening to it. and I wound up copying it, and there was an Aesop joint on there. But at that point, I was like, I was, I didn't even dig into it in any type of scientific manner. But getting to dig into Aesop. Now as a writer who writes every day and as somebody who really has grown to 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 love art in a real special way. Um Aesop's brilliance, I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen anything like it. I feel that in a thousand years people will be discussing it. I don't feel that he is I feel I don't feel like he's like other people. You know what I mean? Um there's something going on with him that is proof of God. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, getting to do those records with him, that's a whole different energy there too. Because here's this cat Ace who be really, you know, many of his bars make me just make a face that ain't even a word for like, wow. You know what I mean? Just kind of getting yes. wild by his bars. <laughs> yeah. And, um... And but but for me, you know, I take that energy and I absorb it, and I'm like, yo, you know, what is this gonna turn up in me? You know what I mean? Because I just got that bolt. You know what I mean? Like like lightning bolt. Like he shot the lightning bolt, and it hit me, and now I'm 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 generating on a on a slightly different level. You know what I mean? Um, those I mean I look at some of the songs for me and Ace. You know what I mean? And all the glory be to God. I could never write this stuff myself. I'm not ill like that at all. But I think of some of the joints me and Aza, like a joint like Yuhu that Quelle Chris did the production for. Yep. Quelle Chris did this joint called Yuhu with me and Ace on it. You know, if 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 anybody not familiar with the Lights records, that's a good place to start because um Ace's verse on that, that and another a joint called um Couple Things, which we wrote when we was in Madison, Wisconsin one time. I'm just thinking of these Ace joints where I heard his verse. And it kind of like, it kind of like made my psyche, like, both, like tilted my psyche in a different way. But but the result being some songs that I really, really, really love. You know, like I tell you about Dusty, like when I, I tell you about Dusty, I don't want for Dusty to be the first thing people hear from me, you know? But, 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 but a couple things, or oatmeal cookies, or, or Yoo-Hoo, you know, like, there's a bunch of Aesop stuff that I don't mind at all if that's the, you know the, the first thing people hear from me. Yeah, I mean, I, to let folks know as a fan, I saw you perform at the High Water Music show like at CMJ back in 2009. Move that, move that. I saw Aesop show where he brought you out move and y'all did a bunch. Of, it wasn't just like he brought you out for like a verse. I was like, move oh that. wait, huh? <laughs> what? And then, and then when y'all did the project, I was like, as a hip hop fan, it merged worlds to me in, in a way because, like, for some reason, that Def Jux world seemed to have a certain audience. And then the Stone's Throw or some of the New York kind of um, what I what I enjoyed, they didn't always merge together, even yeah. though we'd be at the shows together, even though, yeah. the, you know, there was a, a consistency of like people who love music. Right. It was to me, man, like bringing together these worlds of lyricism, of concept, of meaning, of Authenticity, and I don't know if, mm -hmm. if that means anything to people anymore, but to me, that matters a lot. And even oh, yeah. if it's people just trying to find themselves, even mm -hmm. if we all kind of present a persona, mm -hmm. to me, when I heard those records, lyrically, I was blown away. Like, you already, again, as a fan, I saw you at Knitting Factory, and uh, one of your openers shortened their set. And I guess you were like, I'll take up the time. And you did like an hour and a half or something crazy <laughs> of all bangers. Oh, Every look, single look. song. Good looking out, yeah. And I'm there in the crowd like, I throw shows. I don't tend to be in the crowd for an hour, hour and a half. Right. I'll pop through for 20 minutes and go home. 
And it was it's fascinating to see how you get excited about your own work. Yeah, yeah, I do have fun up there. I have fun up there. I miss it up there. You know what I mean? Yeah. I definitely miss it up there during the current what have you, you know? But, uh, and so, so yeah, so I noticed that when y'all did that project on Lice, it brought something in the in the three different projects. It brought something out of you that mm -hmm. seemed to be very unique yeah, and yeah. and still you though. It wasn't him trying to sound like you. It yeah, wasn't you trying that. to sound like him. Yeah. Uh, and so I just wanted to fan out real quick and, and oh, yo, I appreciate I, it. I, and I think you make a great point about just the because uh, because those environments and atmospheres that are different in hip hop, they're real. You know what I mean? Like when you talk about. You know, uh, uh, there were plenty of Aesop fans that love Rhymes that have now become Homeboy Sandman fans that had never heard of me. And there are plenty of Homeboy Sandman fans that are now huge Aesop fans that weren't familiar with his work. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, because of, you know, who, there's all types of different ways that these segments grow. You know, sometimes the segments is based on race. Sometimes the segments is based on press coverage. Sometimes the segments is based on geography. There's all different types of ways. But it definitely is 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 great to come together like that. But um and then one other thing I wanted to say, oh yeah, like the dudes that I do records with, not always, but oftentimes, like the two so far we talking about Q, Edon and Ace. And this is the way I wanna be. You know, because you talk about it's not them trying to sound like me or me trying to sound like them. They can't sound like me. They, because, not because nobody can sound like me, that I, because they too unique. They too unique. They they can't stop being as unique as they are. They are special. You know what I mean? I want to be that way. I don't want to, I want to be in a room with unique artists and we could all throw energy into the pot and create something new. But I, I don't want and I want them to bring something out of me that wasn't there. But I want to be so unique that it's always going to be Homeboy Sandman. It's always going to be Aesop. It's always going to be Quelle. It's always going to be Edon. It's always going to be whoever it is, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah that makes total sense. And and uh, to kind of take folks on a journey, coming up in New York, hip-hop, whether you, people call it underground, indie, what have you, um, seeing how things branched out. Because there's a point where a lot of people in the same room where two or three years later, their groups broke up or someone moved to another part of the country mm -hmm. and they're not anymore. And so what was it like going from being on High Water Music and working with Sucio and them to then mm -hmm. working with Stone's Throw to now what you're doing? How, how was that manifested for you? Shoot, man. Um, you know, early on around the time when we was first rocking, it was really just... It was really all bubble. It was really all New York bubble. It wasn't... Re you know, the music wasn't really leaving New York, you know, the music that I was making, you know, just speaking for me, like when I was being on Squeeze Radio, you know what I mean? Running around with AOK, -OK, running around with Fresh, Eighth One, Peso, Nola Doll, and Two Hungry Bros. When we was running around, um, we were trying to, like when, 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 when you mentioned that era, it reminds me of like, yo, we trying to take over New York, you know what I mean? Right. Like we wasn't even thinking on a, we wasn't thinking on a on a on a on a scale beyond that. You know what I mean? It was like, yo, there's five bros here. Even you know Staten Island, we be in Red Martini with Cyclonus. We be in Red Martini with a uh, with a uh, with my brother um, Optometrist. You know what I'm saying? And we be you know I can't remember all the all the, but we would be in all five boroughs, trying to let everybody know, yo. If you live in this city, I'm homeboy saying, man, I get biz like this. You should know that. You know what I mean? And I'm going to bring it to you, you know?